All right, so this is one of my favorite lenses that I've ever used, and it's a 50 millimeter F1.2 G Master by Sony. It has great color, has amazing sharpness, and some custom features built into the lens. But it also has a 1.2 aperture, which means that you're gonna have crazy shallow depth of field, and you're gonna let a lot of light into your sensors. But what if I told you that this isn't the fastest lens you can put on your Sony camera? What's going on guys, it's Kofi Boa, and in today's video, we're actually gonna do a little bit of a lens battle with the 50 millimeter focal length and the Zongzi T1.0 versus a Sony 50 millimeter G Master lens in the F1.2. So you're gonna notice right off the bat that these two lenses look vastly different from each other. Where the Sony G Master lens is going to have a manual aperture, but it doesn't have some of the gear teeth that you would find on the Zongzi 50 millimeter. Now the Zongzi 50 millimeter is going to be a fully manual lens where the G Master lens is obviously going to have autofocus. Now the minimum focusing distance on the Sony G Master lens is going to be about 40 centimeters, which actually isn't that bad. It's about a foot in a little bit, but on the Zongzi side of things, you're looking at about two feet in terms of your minimum focusing distance. Now with having a manual focus lens, you're going to have a 285 degree focus throw, which means it's going to be a lot easier to dial in your manual focus when you have a focus puller or you're pulling it by yourself. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. There might be a problem. Now, if you wanna put filters on the Sony G Master lens, there's no problem because it has a 72 millimeter filter thread. It makes it easy for you to use the majority of the filters that are available. And this is where we're gonna have a little bit of problems on the Zong Z side of things because its filter thread is 105 millimeters. I've never actually seen a filter that could fit that. Now the Sony 50 millimeter G Master lens does have custom buttons that you can map different features to it, where the Zongzi being full manual also doesn't have that electronic feature. All right, so we're gonna address the elephant in the room. And, and by elephant, I mean the Zongzi 50 millimeter T 1.0 because it's massive. Now, if you think that the Sony G Master lens was a big lens at about 778 grams, the Zongzi 50 millimeter T 1.0 is four pounds. Like if you haven't been in the gym for the last like six to eight months, I wouldn't even recommend picking up this lens and attaching it to your camera. It's gonna add a ton of weight to your overall kit. And like, just look at this thing, this thing, like my hands are big. And I mentioned that a lot on this channel and this actually covers my entire hand. Now with a big lens, you're also going to need big support because of the lens size that this is. If you leave this unattended on your sensor for too long, you actually might rip the sensor right off of the camera. Now what I do recommend is getting yourself some lens support. They're fairly easy to find and reasonably priced and all you have to do is attach them via the 50 millimeter rods that's gonna go on your camera kit already. That way you could actually hold the lens up so over time it actually doesn't start to rip out the sensor from your camera. Because bad things happen to good people, that's something you wanna be aware of. Okay, now that all the physical's out of the way, what are some of the image qualities between the 50 millimeter G Master lens and a cinema lens like the Zongzi T 1.0? Now in terms of color and sharpness, I do find that the Zong Z lens isn't necessarily super sharp, but it's also not incredibly soft either. It does have that little bit of a halfway point between vintage and a modern lens, kind of like the DZOs. However, it does have a little bit of a warmer feel and a better overall look that feels a little bit more pleasing. Okay, so as we bust it open, I mean, as we open up our aperture to T1.0 and F1.2, we're gonna compare what they look like while the aperture is wide open. Now, because you have autofocus on the F1.2 lens, it's gonna be very easy to dial in your focus using the 50 millimeter G Master lens. However, that's gonna be really difficult when you're using T1.0 on the Zongzi 50 millimeter. In fact, I kind of really don't recommend shooting at T1.0 if you're gonna be shooting in handheld, especially with the changing planes and focus and the fact that it's a razor sharp thin plane, it's gonna be really hard to actually dial in your focus at T1.0. However, if you are gonna be using this on a tripod and it's stationary, you actually can get some really nice images, which also is probably just a factor of the fact that you're shooting at T1.0 in the first place. Now, in terms of some of the flares that come out of this lens, the 50 millimeter G Master lens is as neutral as possible. There's nothing that comes out too crazy 
easy. It just very much looks very clean. It doesn't look overdone. It looks as good as you would expect from a modern photography lens. Now, when shooting at T1.0 on the Zongzi 50 millimeter, I noticed that when you put a light source directly in front of it, it does have this circular ghosting that goes around it. And you do have to raise your aperture a little bit in order to get rid of it. Now, in terms of chromatic aberration between these two lenses, the Sony 50 millimeter G Master lens virtually doesn't have any. So even having 1% chromatic aberration on the Zongzi side of things is still going to be more than the 50 mil G Master. Now, the Zongzi 50 millimeter does have a little bit of chromatic aberration when you open things up wide open, you put it in your light sources and you zoom in to try to find some of those findings. However, I didn't find it incredibly distracting into my image and I have found that on some other lenses that might not be a modern photography one. And after testing out these two lenses versus each other for the last little bit and trying to figure out which one is the better, there's actually not a clear distinct winner here, which might actually be surprising to some people, but hear me out. Where the 50 millimeter G Master wins is gonna be some of the obvious things. You have custom buttons, you have autofocus, you could put on whatever filter size you want at 72 millimeters, either you step up or you step down, and it's also native to the Sony E-mount. However, it does have that clinically sharp look that some people actually don't like in some of their filmmaking. And even when you add on filters and different things on top of your lens or you grade it a certain way, it still has that look, it still has that identity. It's a modern photography lens that you're trying to coat as something that's vintage or something that has a little bit of character to it. And this is where the Zongzi 50 millimeter starts to come into play. It's a manual focus lens with a long throw, which means you're gonna be able to dial in your manual focus a lot easier because there isn't really a defined focus throw on the 50 millimeter G Master lens. The lens also has a little bit of character to it as well. So if you're going for a certain look, this is something that you might wanna pick up versus something that's a little bit more modern when there's a certain type of feel that you want into your footage. And when you're going to the Zongzi side of things, you might lose out on some of those features that you have in the 50 millimeter G Master lens, but you're also gonna pay a hell of a lot less while going with the manual focusing cinema lens. Even though they're the same 50 millimeter focal length, this is kind of an apples and oranges conversation. However, I did find two problems with the Zongzi 50 millimeter T1.0 lens that I kind of hope that they improve on in another version or maybe I'm doing something wrong. Now, number one is I did mention that there is a pretty long focus row at 285 degrees. However, as I go to close focus or infinity, the actual turn of the ring isn't exactly consistent. In fact, when I actually go to my minimum focusing distance, it actually starts to get stuck and slow down a little bit, which just isn't going to work, especially when you're gonna be using a focus puller and having someone doing that for you while you're on set. And speaking of focus, and that's generally the two problems that I have with this lens, is that a focus motor for this one, you're going to have to buy something a little bit more expensive. Now I did try to use the Axune FC01 in order to try to pull focus on this lens, but because the lens is so big, it's so heavy, and requires a lot of power and force, the Axune follow focus system actually didn't work with this lens. In fact, even try to calibrate it, it didn't move and it kind of just gave up. Which means that if you are gonna be using a focus puller, you probably wanna have something with a little more strength and power in order to dial in the focus using the Zongzi 50 millimeter. Okay, outside of that, and maybe there's like one more problem if you wanna call it a problem, but the Zongzi 50 millimeter T1.0 actually isn't a Sony E-mount native lens. In fact, it's a PL mount lens, which you're gonna find on bigger cinema cameras like the Sony Venice or the Ari Alexa, and it's not gonna fit in your Sony E-mount or your Canon EF mount or any any of the other mounts outside of that. But what you can get is one of these EF to PL adapters that you can put on the Zongzi 50 millimeter or any other PL mount lens. And when you have one of these, you can use a variety of different PL lenses that you can mount onto your Sony E-mount camera. The link is gonna be in the description down below. I know you're already asking. That being said, after all of this, which one would you pick? Do you want the character of a cinema lens like the Zongzi T1.0, or do you want that clinically clean sharpness and autofocus of the Sony G Master? Personally, for me, it's gonna be different strokes for different folks. If I'm on a running gun job and I don't have someone to pull focus for me or I don't have the time to set up shots, I'm always gonna go with the autofocus Sony lenses. However, as a cinematographer that's still trying to find the lenses to create their overall look, Using something like a cinema lens like the Zongzi 50 millimeter is gonna be something that might be interesting to me, especially when I have a desired look for my next film or commercial. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at the very least you learned something. And if you guys wanna see another video, uh, go ahead. It'll be somewhere on the screen. I'm not pointing anymore. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.